This is Blanc Pond's uh, 50 fathoms titanium, 45. Hold it, hold it, put it a little further away from you. Actually, no, closer to you. It looks, it looks bigger than you. So we'll figure out <laughs> how to frame it. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian from I'm Michael. Theo. From Theo and Harris. That's Mike. Michael's on strike today. Michael's behind the camera. Today. Wait for my contract negotiations. <laughs> but uh, we're here at London Jewelers today, and I'm taking a look at three watches that I absolutely adore that I can't buy because they're a little bit too big for my wrist. They're not too big. They're, perfect, they're perfectly proportioned. They're great watches. I wouldn't change a thing about them, but they are too big for my wrist. But I think that you should take a look, especially at our last watch here, which is... Uh, really one of, I think, the best buys in, in luxury dive watches, luxury sports watches, period. It's got history, it's got quality, I think the price is extremely fair, um, and I think, that, that I think it's a no-brainer, really, to consider. Um, so, let's start off with our first piece. What do you think, Big Mike? Let's start off with our first piece. Mont Blanc? Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. This is the Mont Blanc 1858, great year, Geosphere. That was a year that you uh, decided you were going to stop having new values by, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm traditional. So this is their 1858 Geosphere. It, it's a limited edition model, limited to 1,858 pieces, but this model is available at the, uh, at the London Jewelers Watch Salon. Um, it's cased in bronze here, which I think, and we'll talk more about it later, but is a great material, alternative metal. I understand that some people, you know, think that it may age to a degree that they don't like. They don't like when their watch looks dirty. Um, I like the patina of a bronze case, and if it becomes too much, if you're at the shore too often, and if it gets that you know, color that you don't love, you just clean it. I don't really personally feel like that's a very big problem. I think the pros greatly outweigh the cons on bronze watches. Um, I just love that very rich and just warm coloring. Um, just the same way that I like a, a silver Tudor Black Bay over a steel Tudor Black Bay. There's just that subtle color difference that means a lot to me. And the weight as well. The weight is substantial on this watch. But it's not just the materials here that are very interesting. Uh, and this is a ceramic bezel, by the way. But it's, it's, the, it's the complication that is fantastic. So this watch was conceived to honor heroes of mountain climbing, uh, which is obviously something that's very you know, germane to culture when you're talking about, about Switzerland. Right, so I think that the way that they linked that honor or homage is very interesting. Um, not just cheap and, and you know, kind of kitschy. It's uh, on the dial. The the world's seven summits are actually marked with these red dots on these two globes, um, and they're also engraved in the case back. But the two globes aren't just for show. They actually rotate uh, a full rotation each 24 hours, uh, and both are surrounded by a scale with 24 time zones, along with day and night indication and contrast and colors. So Mont Blanc actually developed something. I'm not sure if this is the first time it's been done, but um, I, I think it's a very interesting complication. In addition to a dual time zone function, Mont Blanc also introduced this technology, this complication that I don't think I've ever seen before, and that's these rotating globes. I think that Mont Blanc just delivered so far and above, you know, the call of duty here, um, introducing something that I don't know if I've ever seen on a watch, and introducing it at, at $6,500 um, all around in, a, in a, just a beautiful design and everything. I really think it's a fantastic watch. It's a little bit too big for my wrist at 42 millimeters, but for, I mean, for the vast majority of people, I think, for certainly my friends and most of my clients, this watch is just a fantastic, interesting, off the beaten path option that I really, really love. So terrific job to Mont Blanc. IWC's Portuguese Automatic with a tremendous seven day power reserve. This is a phenomenal watch. Moby Dick. Mo Why is it Moby Dick? Great White Whale, baby. Great White Whale, it's silver. It's silver with blue, with, with uh, actually beautiful blue steel right, hands. And... About the watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain oh. fucking Ahab. <laughs> This watch is stunning. It looks complicated. Um, it's, the, the dial layout is incredibly beautiful and clean and simplistic. I love the dial to case ratio. I mean, everything about this watch to me is just, it's really just class. On the left, you've got a sub-dial for, for running seconds. Beautiful. And on the right, you've got their, uh, their power reserve, which is a seven-day indicator. So this watch just has a ton of power. On the bottom you've got date, but the date is window is executed really, really well. Not dropped like a like an empty window, but really just 
just recessed really, really well, just very well designed date window. And if you flip it over and you look at the movement, you're in for just a real treat. Uh, keep in mind the retail price of this watch is $13,100, and I think that's a tremendous value point, especially when, like I said, you, you look over and look at this case back. First of all, this movement is absolutely enormous, which is not something we're really used to seeing, uh, meaning movements that fit into their case backs very well. Um, that is, that is uncommon under $20,000 when you're talking about a lot of dress watches. A lot of brands like to repurpose old movements and, and, and bring them into new watches. So you have new design, but not mechanics that, that meet that, that new design, right? The movement is their 52010 caliber. So it's an in-house movement, like I mentioned. Uh, it utilizes ceramic technology, which reduces friction throughout the movement. And um, it's just, it's fantastic to wind. Th th these are, I mean, which is a silly little thing. It's really just the beauty and the finishing of the movement that's fantastic, obviously, with the, with the power reserve. Um, I think this watch represents a fountain of value, a fortune of value. I think it's nuts. Um, th what, what this watch does that the other two watches that I chose don't do is it, it balances elegance and sport, classic design and modernity really well. This is a dress watch, right? You have a, an exotic strap, you know, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to explain all the elements of a dress watch, right? But you can tell it, right? You, you, you can tell that this is, a, this is an elegant watch, right? But the sizing, the thickness, the proportions, the complication, everything about it brings, you know, that classic elegance into kind of modernity very well, making it feel like this watch is maybe more casual than it would be dress, right? If this watch was executed by a lot of other brands, a lot of other Swiss brands, they wouldn't have been able to find that balance so well. They think dress or they think sport. I think JLC is a good example of that. And I love JLC, but JLC often is a little, you know, it's, it's dress or it's sport, right? This is just finding that middle ground so well. Again, it's too big for my wrist, which is a shame because I love it, but I recommend this watch wholeheartedly to literally anyone with a wrist a little bit larger than mine um, because this watch is just supremely elegant. I love it. Ah, oh, this is a phenomenal watch. It's 45 millimeters, but it really wears like 42. Um, I, okay, let's get into it. The most expensive watch on the table at a little over $15,000 um, is the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms Titanium. This is larger than the other two. Keep in mind those were at 42 and this is 45 millimeters. Um, but this is just a phenomenal dive watch. Uh, Blanc Pond has deep roots in diving back to the 1950s. This is not riding in the wake of anyone else. This is in and of its own right, its own heritage. Um, but what really, what really you know, uh, separates this watch is their luxurious approach. Now, it's built like a, like a tool watch, right? This titanium finishing. Nothing about this watch is, is glittery, right? Nothing about this watch is precious in that traditional kind of like shiny sense. Um, but, um, but the way that they executed, particularly the, the bezel and the movement, uh, and the whole watch is, is very good throughout, but the, the dial execution is beautiful, the blue is striking, but the bezel to me is brilliant. Um, it, you know, we know that there, there are a couple of traditional ways to make bezels. Uh, one was aluminum, then we went into ceramic, uh, before all of that was Bakelite, but now we're into sapphire. And I think that sapphire bezels are by far the most beautiful bezels. I think they've got They've got depth that ceramic bezels don't have, and they've obviously, I mean, they've, they've, got, they've got shape, right? They, they curve and they catch the light, and I think it's beautiful what you can do with color with them. I, I love it. The sapphire bezel alone here is a reason enough to put this watch on a different level than other, you know, dive watches. Um, but really, it's the movement, which is just remarkable. This is, this is certainly the, uh, the, the highest end movement that we've discussed today. It's the caliber 1315. It is an automatic winding movement. That rotor is actually 18 karat white gold, not, not steel. Uh, it's got a free spung balance, silicon escapement, uh, 120 hours of power reserve, and, uh, and just beautiful finishing throughout. This is an in-house movement that fits the watch incredibly well. And we say a couple of those things before, like the free sprung balance and the silicon escapement. What folks don't often realize is it's not like finishing, and finishing is in and of its own right a beautiful art that, that I really appreciate a ton, but, but those are technological improvements that help a watch last longer, that help a watch not need the service that, that, that a predecessor movement you know, would have, that won't have the same incidence rates, things like that. So when a brand invests in new movement technology or embraces new movement technology, it's not even really because they think that the mass market will understand and appreciate the 
technology because generally people are buying on other you know on other variables um, but they're really making an, making an investment in in the nuts and bolts in the actual product not which is what it looks like but in the actual longevity of the product. And um, anyway, of course, Blancpain isn't the only brand that that applies to, um, but Blancpain certainly does embrace that. Uh, I love this watch. I think it's a fantastic dive watch, a luxury dive watch. I'd wear it in two seconds. I would buy it in two seconds. At 45 millimeters, it actually wears fairly small. It wears more like a 42, but it is still a little bit too large for my wrist, so I won't be buying it. But again, I highly suggest you take a look. Thank you to London Jewelers, obviously, for allowing us to come in and look at these watches. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Um, again, not just looking at watches that I'm ready to buy, but looking at watches that just expand my entire view of the industry, right? Looking at products that I never would have considered before. Right? I, I often don't find myself in IWC boutiques. I often don't find myself seeing Mont Blancs in, in the street, but, um, but being able to walk into a salon that's so large and so expansive um, and all these different products products and brands, that's really what, uh, you know, that's where you learn, right? That's where you learn uh, more about watches and your personal taste. So thank you to London Jewelers. I highly suggest that you visit a London Jewelers uh, location. If you live anywhere in the New York area, there, there are six of them, I believe now, including the new one in Short Hills, New Jersey, which is, which is in my neighborhood. And um, maybe I'll see you guys there.